Hey guys, it's Sarah from Book Nerds and Fangirls, and today I'll be doing my reaction to Riverdale Season 4, Episode 6. 6. Now, the past couple of episodes have been weird AF. And I've really enjoyed, of course, the Fred Andrews tribute slash Luke Perry tribute episode. That one was a really great episode of Riverdale. Must surprise me because sometimes Riverdale falls out off the map and uh, I know it's a mystery but like it's getting a little too crazy this season. Season. So I hope they're just all like let's just I hope they just reel it back in just a little bit. I know their main attraction is that they're so out there and so so this wouldn't happen in real life. But sometimes they forget these kids are teenagers. <laughs> teenagers, not adults. But, uh, that's beside the point. The point. Uh, the last episode I was okay with. With the Halloween episode was really good, too. So I liked the Halloween episode, and I liked... Like the Luke Perry tribute episode. I wonder if we're getting a musical episode in this season. I think that'll top the crazy, like just put a little cherry on top of the whole Riverdale craziness, as some might say. But let's go ahead and watch this episode. <laughs> right, as always, I'm gonna do this review by doing what the characters are doing individually. So Archie's storyline, he still has problem with this guy, drug guy called uh, Dodger. Dodger, and he's trying to take all the kids off the street one kid at a time. That way it's not as obvious. But Dodger still has something against him. He just ruined his center and vandalized it. And Archie and FP are working together to try and bust Dodger so they can get him off the streets for good. Now this one might spell a little trouble for Archie. Archie, I know Archie has been like safe up to this point, but there's only so much, you know, leeway that a character can get before he gets injured. Uh, I know we're possibly losing a main character. Character, so I think it's not Jughead. I think they're leading into Archie getting killed off. Killed up. I really hope not. I really don't want to lose any of the core four, but I don't know. Uh, as you have seen from my theories about Riverdale, I think I know the storyline they're going for, and it would be a pretty good twist. So if you haven't watched my theory from the last episode, I would go check that video out. It's at the very end of the video, so if you don't want to watch that video entirely, just skip forward to the end and you'll see my theory about what's all going on with this storyline. Okay, then we got <coughs> Jughead, who is trying to solve the mystery about his grandfather. He has a theory that his grandfather wrote the second of his mysteries, but he was more of a ghostwriter. <coughs> Because there's inconsistencies to some of these books. So he thinks his grandfather wrote them, wrote them and someone just took credit for his writing. Which, you know, we, in today's society, wouldn't surprise me. Actually, because we do have ghostwriters. We do have scandals invo involving authors and ghostwriters. So, <laughs> take this as you will. As he will, he shares his theory with Betty. Betty and Betty's all like, I don't know, this seems very far fetched. But so it is, you know, uh, thinking your new half brother is a serial killer. <clears throat> killer just because you have the genes for it. 
I mean, that might come from your father's genes. I don't know if it necessarily comes from your mother's. Mother's, obviously, mo her mother and Polly don't have the genes, so... I don't know. He claims that he has the genes. Genes, and that he's not doing... Not, uh, giving in to them, which is why he's helping Betty. But there's only something definitely shady going on with Charles. That's for sure. And then Betty, you know, is investigating Charles and if whether or not he's a serial killer. And then she's all like, oh my god, of course. So I don't know why I didn't think of this. Now she's off in jail visiting Chick, which I think is a bad idea. And when did his hair go back to blonde? Last time we saw him, it was red. Red because, you know, Penelope Blossom. Blossom was just all like, you're the new Jason. And it was just like, yeah. Yeah. And that's like, uh, mentioning Penelope is a perfect segue to mention Cheryl. Of course, there's this Julian doll and she's been having nightmares about it. About how it wants, it wants, you know, her body or revenge because it's got the spirit of her dead brother, Julian, which she absorbed in the womb and just stating something that could totally happen. I've heard actual stories about twins absorbing the other twin in the womb. Womb, so that could happen. Haven't they actually made, like, horror stories about that, too? <laughs> Two or one twin, live twin, res one, like, dead twin resenting the live twin? Because they were born and, uh, they weren't- I I've seen storylines about that done a lot, and it is actually a real thing. So it might be interesting to explore that. That, but I'm not sure where they're going with this whole triplet storyline. It's intriguing, but it's also weird. Weird. And then last but not least, we have Veronica, who is dealing with her dad's in- I wouldn't say infidelity, but secret ha- secret child. It's Hermosa, who is the half-sister- sister of, uh, <laughs> Veronica. Veronica Hiram had another daughter. And then, you know, I like how Veronica's all like, so do I have any more secret siblings that you didn't warn me about? And he's like, nah, she's the only one. And I'm all like, okay, that's good. <clears throat> good, don't want more half siblings popping up that we didn't know about. Know about. And I love how they're trying to make, you know, a peaceful way of living because they all have to deal with each other now. Now and then, uh, I don't trust Hermosa. And I don't trust Hiram and Hermosa together, and uh, <coughs> that's just it. And then Hiram wants, like, Veronica to give Hermosa a job at Lava. Lo I, I cannot pronounce that. Her, uh, speakeasy, and then Veronica's like, the only person I'm giving a job in my speakeasy is my mother. <laughs> mother, that one's mine. You can't have it. Blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> blah. Also, this house is ours, so get out. And I'm just all like, yes, queen, go off. <laughs> but, uh, that's all I have to update you guys on right now. I don't really feel an attachment to this episode quite yet. So, let's get on and uh, watch the rest of the episode. Okay, so not much happened with Archie in the gym except, you know, him talking to some of the kids, going like, what is Dodger giving you to get you on the streets and get you to do the, all this stuff for him? 
and they he pays them, but their money goes to the arcade which he runs, and they get pizza, and she's all like, and then Archie tells him, <coughs> you're basically throwing your life away for arcade games and pizza, and you know protection against you know Dodgers gang to begin with, but. I get it somewhat. I'm just like on Archie's side. Of course I'm on Archie's side right here. Right here. It is a very uh, sad thing that's happening to these kids because of one person. And then we have, uh, there wasn't much about Jughead in this, this but then we have uh, Betty and she's per. And then Chick tells her stuff about when he lived with Charles. Charles and how Charles murdered a guy. So she goes to Charles and goes, I know, Chick told me this and we're gonna do a lie detector test. And he passes a lie detector test. But a lot of people know that to pass a lie detector test, test all you really have to do is stay calm. I think people have put that to the test. Before, so lie detector tests aren't 100% accurate most of the time. Most of the time. So I have a feeling Charles is lying. Of course. I don't know why Chick would lie by this point, but Chick's a liar too. I think they might be working together, but that's just my theory. Um, let's see, what else is happening? How many, of course, you know, Veronica trying to adjust to the life of Hermosa and Hiram and her mom being back and yada 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 and I love the whole we put enemies on table 11 and like a Hiram just goes to her speakeasy and goes oh well we wouldn't want to miss your mom's first day as a working citizen and then uh, I like a Veronica's just all like yeah sure uh Put them on table 11, which is, you know, of course, that one was funny to me. And then last but not least, we have Cheryl, who's getting haunted by this doll. And then Dagwood choked on a ping pong ball, which is weird, because I don't know how old the twins are at this point. Point, like, how could, like, there's a lot of things that could happen. So he choked on a ping pong ball, and... Of course, Cheryl thinks it's Julian's fault, but kids could choke on things no matter what. What, haunted doll or not? But, uh... Then, uh, she goes to her house and confronts Julian that's out of the circle and into Jason's arms, and then, like, three of her relatives are there. There, and they probably saw Jason's dead body, but, you know... Blossoms have no trail of incest, just so we we got a lot of toxicity in this family to begin with. So I don't think they're gonna say anything about it, but who knows? No, so let's go ahead and get on to this episode because it's a weird one. Don't have sex with him. Don't have sex with him. What the fuck, am I? What the hell? Okay, so Veronica and not Veronica, Hermione and Hiram just had sex again, and I'm just like, why, girl? Why? We finally got rid of Hiram. What the hell? <clears throat> well, and of course, she invites him back in the house. Whenever Veronica gets upset about it, he's all like, oh, this is just about your half sister. It's like, no, bitch, it's about that you're an asshole and try to kill her boy. Not kill her boyfriend. Try to set up her boyfriend on multiple occasions. You did that by yourself. No tea, no shade, but like, no, actually, yes, tea, yes, shade, but like, literally, you didn't, you think that she says that by that? I agree with her. He's deranged. <laughs> deranged. And then Tony finally looks like, like Cheryl is going off the deep end. Not the deep end, but she's finally starting to like worry about Cheryl's mental health, which, you know, as soon as I figured out that uh, Cheryl had her dead brother in a chapel, I would have like been like, mm -mm, maybe my girlfriend needs a little bit of professional help. 
Now, because there's only so much you could do, do, and it's just like, I feel bad for Cheryl, I feel bad for Tony. I like how Cheryl was just like drowning the dead doll. <clears throat> doll. Maybe Tony could suggest to Cheryl to see like a family therapist or whatnot to help her out because honestly she hasn't been the same since her brother's death. Death, but it's been gloss over for like more, you know, outrageous content. And then, uh, then you got Betty, who, you know, chick, like, tattled about the location of, like, the shady man. Man, because he's a fucking rat. Might call him Tex X69 by now, if you know what I mean, but, like, he snitched so fast. It was just like, really? It was just like, ugh. But anyway. I can't wait to see how that unfolds. I mean, people gain consequences for their actions, I guess. And then, uh, last but not least, we have, like, Jughead, who figured out that his grandfather did write some of the novels, which, you know, ghostwriters, they suck. It sucks whenever you can't, you know, get your work out there and people steal your work and it's just like, uh. But, uh, I don't know. This got a little bit more interesting. Oh, and they, on the Archie front, Hiram wanted to uh, express his condolences and write a check out for Archie. And then I like how Archie's all like, I don't need your money that bad. Bad. Because money from you comes at a price. It doesn't just come for free. And, you know... With Hiram, I don't trust Hiram. Hiram, I don't believe he wants to turn over a new leaf. It's just, it's who Hiram is. And, uh, I don't know. Now, we'll see more about how this unfolds. So, so much has happened in that tiny little section that just happened, so we're gonna go through characters again. Let's start off with Jughead. Jughead proved that his grandfather wrote the first of those books, which makes the guy he was talking to a liar. Sorry, I can't remember names that well when it comes to new characters. And then he confronted him about it, and he's all like, how dare you accuse me of plagiarism? Yada yada, I could have you expelled, blah blah blah. And he takes it to its teacher, and he goes, yeah, that's your grandfather's writing, all right. So, of course, of course he's lying about it, of course he's trying to cover his own ass, and the teacher is gonna help Jughead prove that this guy is faulty, that he plagiarized, and got success off his grandfather, which is gonna make a huge fallout, probably leading to Jughead's death. I don't know how Betty, Archie, and Veronica are gonna get involved in this. Like I said, I have my own theory about why everything's like that. And yada yada yada, but uh... I don't know, this is an interesting like, plot point. I really hope they do something productive with it. And then, you know, Hermosa and Veronica had a talk. A talk about, uh, Hiram and who Hiram was to Hermosa's mother and how he took care of her until she died and she doesn't have to care about Hiram, but Hermosa does because she sees the good in him while Veronica just sees the bad. And yeah, that could... Yeah, I get Hermosa's, like, talking points, and I get that she thinks Hiram's a good person. But we know that Hiram is very capable of being a bad person. He's, like, a very morally gray character. He's capable of doing good things, but only if it's good for him. So he's got that great of a person, but I can see her point. Point why she would think he's a good guy, and apparently 
Hermione and Hiram are renewing their vows, and I'm just all like, you don't have to go that hard. You can still stay married, stay married, or whatever. And I'm just like, <laughs> why? Why? And then of course, you know, Dodger figured out that Archie was like the masked vigilante, and he shot a. Archie's house, well, Archie and his mother were in it. Thankfully, no one was hurt. Hurt, but, like, ugh, I really hate Dodger and his gang. Gang, I'm just all like, wow, okay. Y'all are awful, but they're supposed to be awful, so, you know. I wonder if, like, Hiram could do something about it. It's not like, you want to make it up to me? Make this douchebag go away. Go away. I'm pretty sure Hiram has the capability of doing that. Doing that. And if he really wanted to be, like, this overall good guy now, that's a good way to prove it. And then, hmm, what else? Else, like, uh, Charles helped cover up that dead body crime with FP that chick talked about and now Betty trusts him. I still don't trust him, but you know, he do anything for Betty and his family. Family, I'm starting to like wonder about that though. Though I'm wondering what his angle is to make Betty trust him and I don't know. <coughs> we'll see. About that. And then, of course, Cheryl's family wants to <clears throat> claim her as uh, mentally insane or, you know, mentally unfit <laughs> to run a business. And I'm just like, there's nothing but bad in that business. So I would just, like, sell it to the family. I'll be like, tell you what, I'll sell you <clears throat> that stupid share. Share in this house if you just get the fuck off my back. <laughs> Back about it. Like, I, I would bury Jason back in the backyard, sell that stupid ass house <coughs> and the company, and just like go live with Tony somewhere else. Else, that would be like the perfect way to, you know, <coughs> now get rid of the bad juju that's happening. <coughs> happening. But, like, I agree with Cheryl, those the family members are leeches. I would sell the com I'd be like, okay, yeah, sure. I'll sell the company. I would sell the company underneath <clears throat> my share of the company to someone. Possibly Hiram, because you know Hiram will just be like, okay. Just run with it. I'd just be like, I don't like selling this to Hiram. Or, like, I would even sell it to, like, freaking Veronica. Because what are they actually going to do to Veronica? But, you know, there's ways to sell her share without her family knowing it. So, like, sure, I'll sell my share. I'll put Thistle House back in someone else's name. Not any of your leechy asses, but... Or I would just, like, you know, sign over it to Tony. Honestly. I don't know how old these people are, but, you know. There's ways to get about it. About it, and this is Riverdale logic, you know? Doesn't have to make sense when it's Riverdale. Alright, let's get back to Zubzu. So, of course, the teacher that was gonna help Jughead just jumped out a window, and I'm just all like, of course, we weren't. He wasn't gonna help. God damn it. These people are crazy. Jughead, get out of there. Oh my, I would transfer to Riverdale High. So fucking fast, it's a leg, bro. Be like, eh. Be like, Dad, I know you want me to go here, but these bitches are crazy, okay? You're fucking crazy. Riverdale's safer, and I never thought I would say that. Oh my god. They got this over, you know, plagiarism for a book. I know your reputation could get ruined, but like, bro. That's just. Ugh. Like. That's a level too far. And then we have, like, Hermosa invading Veronica's space, and it's like, you know what? What? I was gonna go to this stupid Valerie noodle ceremony, but now I'm not. 
Not ev everyone. I'm out. And no one's gonna take an inch of my property away from me. And I'm just like, yes, Veronica, just go off. <laughs> and then Hiram not helping Archie. Archie, like, I know you didn't turn over a leaf that fast, Hiram, and you owe Archie. I mean, I know he's one of the reasons why you were in jail, but, like, come on. You owe a lot of people, including your daughter. I mean, come on. Now you don't. You want to stop doing scummy ass things? Thanks, I don't buy it. Maybe Hiram will help Archie somehow. Now he just won't say he did. And then, hmm, what else was I gonna say? But we didn't get a lot of Betty, but like, one of Cheryl's relatives broke into the chapel, saw Jason, a tech. Tony was gonna attack, was starting to attack Cheryl and like threaten her life over here because he's just all like, you're sick and unnatural and wrong and then Tony just like hits him over the head of a candlestick and I'm just all like, thank you Tony, I mean, ugh, <clears throat> I don't know where this storyline's gonna go. Let's see. Uh, what's gonna happen? Okay, I knew freaking Charles gonna be trusted because him and Chick were in on it together, of course, just so Betty's family could trust him, and I knew they were still a thing. Thing, so it's like, yeah, uh huh. Like, I'm gonna believe that shit. It's Riverdale. Don't believe anyone. <laughs> anymore. Especially Hiram when he says he won't get involved and then suddenly Dodger ends up in a rug out by the center. Center looking pretty badly beaten up. Pretty sure it might be a surprise twist. Might have been all the kids ganging up on him to like beat him the fuck up. And just like wrap him in like a freaking rug and I'm just like uh I, you got what was coming to him, but like, Hiram, if you're saying you're gonna do something, not gonna do something, don't do it. It's like, okay, sure. <laughs> sure, and then, like, just because that one guy... God. Eh. That one guy, uh... God, now I'm like... Because the one guy jumped out of a window, now the author of those books is now teaching them, and I'm just like, hmm, did he kill Jughead and pin it on his friends? I have no idea. I have no clue what's going on. <laughs> on, but like, uh, I still think my theory is correct. Correct. If you don't know my theory, uh, just go and watch my other video. Video. So this episode moved the storyline along a lot, which I appreciate. I still have a little bit of concerns about Cheryl's mental health, but we'll solve them later on this season, probably. So what did you guys think of this episode? I thought it was okay. Riverdale's definitely going back on its escalating shit. Shit, but uh, I don't know. What are your guys' theories? Comment down below and let me know, and I will see you guys when I... Tonight, or maybe tomorrow, whenever I do my Legacies review. I'm so excited about Legacies. Also, I got Disney+, Plus, and I already made a review for High School Musical, the musical, the series, which is a tongue twister. Twister, but I'm having trouble editing it because the clips are on my iPhone and my computer seems to have trouble every time I upload something from my iPhone onto it. So it might be a little bit late, but I'm definitely gonna make one. Make one as well as a video, like a very uh interesting video that I think you guys will enjoy. So comment down below and let me know what you want me to review. I'm always looking for good series to watch. 
to watch. Anna, what do you think's going on on Riverdale? And I will see you guys in my next video. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe if you have not already. And uh, have a good day, guys. See you later.